Um, all right. Printer Inc. Wait, did I miss the... Was that something I was supposed to read? I don't fucking know. All right. Printer Inc. Yeah, I learned about printer. Hey, Bill, I don't think... I don't know if this works, but have you tried printing in, like, navy blue or something dark instead of black? Maybe still the computer will say it needs black ink, but it will be still be legible. Just a thought. By the way, you can change the color by choosing select all, then click that little menu with the black bar. You know, I know you can do all of that. I just can't figure out how to do it. And I also found out you can buy black ink on its own. So there goes that conspiracy theory, too. All right. I also figured out the reason why my TV downstairs never fucking works is because I was hitting the wrong fucking button. I mean, I've learned a lot, okay? The problem is me. All right. Attic and insulation response. Hi, Bill. Maybe too late here for a tip regarding your recent renovation project, but here goes from architect slash contractor with 35 years in the biz. Ah, fuck. Please don't tell me you're going to tell me I did everything wrong. Blown-in insulation is really effective. The rollout fiberglass type leaves gaps if not installed carefully. Well, I got good guys to do it. All right, you're not going to make me question myself now. Blown-in is made from recycled newspaper and treated with a fire retardant. Blown-in leaves no gaps and should be at a thickness specific to L.A. Every region in the country has a code or required R value related to a local climate. Um, It can be installed thicker if you want a higher R value for greater efficiency. With either type, the efficiency is greatly reduced if all holes, gaps are not air sealed, i.e. wire holes, electric boxes, for ceiling lights, recessed lights, covers, plumbing holes, gaps above the... If either type is used and installed to the required R value, but not first air sealed. Dude, couldn't you just let me be happy with my fucking installation? Now I'm going to be all freaked out. It's, it's, I appreciate that you wrote in, though. I'm fucking with you. It's as a result, not meeting the R value and not as effective. Lots of videos out there. Another important part is roof venting. Too much to address here, but that's absolutely worth looking into as well. Um, plumbing. Hot water pipes should be insulated. Hot water will then reach each fixture sooner and conserves water. Um, even insulating cold pipes doesn't hurt. In some cases, as in an attic, they can con- can condensate soak the insulation drip and stain ceilings etc oh jesus other insulation benefits keeps the heat out sound deadening helicopters neighbors don't have to hear you screaming riffing ranting or nia screaming for the millionth time trying to get you to shut the fuck up hope it's not too late good luck bill and go fuck yourself yeah i was a little late um you know what's funny is everybody i met said they hated the spray and, and that it sucks and it's, a, I think, because they all have to try and work around it rather than just rolling it up. It's a big pain in the ass for them. Maybe that's what it was. But I appreciate you letting me know that I've put the wrong insulation in at my house. I didn't say it was wrong. It just needs to be, make sure there's no gaps. But I think they did a great job. Um, unfortunately, I'm coming to the end here of things I need to do to my house. And the last thing I need to do um, technically, I don't need to do it because nothing's happening right now, but I don't want to wait until something does happen, i.e. my sewer pipe out to the street splits after 100 years of fucking film noir shits going through it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Update from 128.19 podcast episode, re-failed vasectomy. Hey, Billy Sad Tits. Uh, writing with an update from your January 28th, 2019 episode regarding failed vasectomies. I am the pregnant girlfriend referenced. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I don't remember this, but I love hearing, finally hearing from the other side. Listen to this. Okay. My ex-boyfriend wrote in about having a vasectomy, me accidentally getting pregnant and asked you for advice. My ex-boyfriend idolizes you and used the situation, situation in quotes, to get your attention. He also used the feature on your podcast to legitimize himself to me at the time. 
I had no idea that he had lied to me about his entire background and identity, including having a vasectomy. Oh, my God. Uh, yep, that lying, stupid, sociopath, pathic motherfucker lied about having a vasectomy, then got me pregnant, and then tried manipulating me into keeping the baby, including writing to you asking what should we do when I'd already made it clear that I would not be keeping the baby because we'd only been dating for three months at the time. Holy shit. This guy's a lunatic. Um, or you killed him and came up with this as your alibi. But this is this is riveting. Uh, to give more background, he's covered in tattoos of a city he's never lived in, in a region he wasn't raised with and doesn't even practice. Oh, my God. While we were dating, his dad contracted a terminal cancer and, air quote, died. But I now know his dad is alive and well. I'm barely scratching the surface here on all his lies and deception. Wow. I know you joke around a lot, but I'd love to know your serious thoughts on what type of person behaves like this. Well, the type of person that I wish you didn't describe it so well on this podcast um, is I don't need this guy fucking getting upset with me. This guy sounds crazy. Manipulates people on this massive scale. By the way, I'm sorry. You were also deceived by this sad sack of shit. Sending love to your family and baby girl. Well, I mean, I just, I mean, I just read these things like they're true. I mean, it didn't really affect my life, I think, as much as you. Um, wow. I don't know why. I have no fucking idea. That would be like, but if I was a psychologist, these are the people I would want to treat. Just for the entertainment value of like, well, what the fuck's he going to say today? You know, I just would, I would like, I'd try to like feed him, you know, to see what he'd come up with. Be like, hey, did you see uh, Chuck Yeager just passed away? And he'd just be, oh, you know, I met Chuck Yeager. <laughs> I just said, okay, here we go. Um, let's see here. Pathological liars. Why? Why do they lie? Okay. Some lies seem to be told in order to make the pathological liar appear the hero or to gain acceptance or sympathy while there's seemingly nothing to be gained from other lies. Some evidence from the 2007 from 2007 suggests that issues affecting the central nervous system may predispose someone to pathologically lying. Pathological liar, how to cope with someone's being a pathological liar. Oh, yeah, break up with them. Uh, pathological lying, also known as mythomania and pseudo-fantastica, is the chronic behavior of, comp of compulsive or habitual lying. Unlike telling the occasional white lie um, to avoid hurting someone's feelings or getting in trouble, a pathological liar seems to lie for no apparent reason. This can make it frustrating or hard to know what to do if you believe uh, what wait, or hard to know what to do if you believe you've met one. Well, it's this easy. You just get them out of your life. Though pathological lying has been recognized. You don't know be amazing if two pathological liars met each other in a bar. Like, how long could they lie to each other before they would both realize, oh, wait, this person's doing what I'm doing? Or would they catch it quicker because... You know, they'd see it because that's what they do. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, I'm sorry you got knocked up by a pathological liar. Um, but am I supposed to believe you at this point? Because now I believed him. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? All right. Girlfriend questioned my sexuality. Good morning, motherfucker. I like that. It's a different one. Good morning, motherfucker. Big fan of the podcast and stand-ups. Thank you. The Michelle Obama bit from Paper, Paper Tiger actually made me cry laughing. Well, that's hilarious. I was talking about doing that. I did a corp, I did a private show one time at this guy's house out in fucking Malibu, right on the ocean. And I did that bit right before I did it on my special and whoo, did not go over well. Um, anyway, so in Nashville with my girlfriend and all her friends, four dudes, seven girls, four day weekend. Uh, I have met them all. Uh, wait, wait, what, what just happened? So in Nashville is how that st sentence starts. So in Nashville with my 
Don't you mean, so I'm in Nashville with my girlfriend and all her friends, four dudes and seven girls for a four-day weekend. I have met them all at different points, and while I thought they were losers, as my girlfriend describes, they were all real nice, just not really my type of people or vibe. Wait a minute. Your girlfriend described her friends as losers? I'm confused. There's four dudes and seven girls. Four-day weekend. I've met them all at different points. And while I thought they were losers, as my girlfriend describes, they were all real nice, just not really my... Okay, so you thought they were losers. And she said, no, they're nice, just not your type of people. Parentheses, dubstep at 10 in the morning, making jokes about drinking again. Entire weekend, I'm watching all these dude wrestle around and grab each other's dick. Dicks, fair to say, for context, I wrestled in high school, and when I asked, what the fuck are y'all doing, I was told it was just wrestling. I should, I should get it. Uh, okay. All right. Bro, I never put my hand on my buddy's cock five times while we were wrestling in front of a party. For the record, me and my friends don't do that at all, let alone in public. I consider myself a man's man and don't like to be touched by girls who aren't my girlfriend, let alone other dudes. We are at a bar. Tempers are up because I didn't want to be there anyway. The one guy who sent it all over the edge just doesn't. There's no punctuation in this, everybody. Just doesn't walk right, man. The dude sashays when he walks. Oh, I see. I see what's going on here. You know, walks with his hips and shit. And as my girl puts it, hates his girlfriend. I'm thinking it's because she's not his type, as in female. Okay. And this douchebag tries to sit on my lap, and I laughed it off and was like, nah, bro, not me. Then he puts his hand on my inner thigh and asks me what's wrong, looking into my eyes like he's ready to fuck me in front of God and everyone. Uh, yeah, this is not, this is, none of this is cool. This guy should not be doing any of this shit. I've been told I have a Bill Burr temper. Oh, Jesus. And I lost it. And when she asked me what's wrong, he's just trying to be nice. I said, no, he's trying to fuck me because this dude is gay. And she says, why do you think he's gay? Are you that uncomfortable with your sexuality? Of course, of course. I knew it was going to get thrown back at you. You know? If if that was reversed and it was some guy putting his hand on her inner thigh and she goes and she flipped out, you would back her. You know, it's your body. Don't touch me. Right. That seems to only work for women. Anyway, so naturally I left the bar and broke up with her as soon as we got home. Nice move. Nice move. That was a good move because this this is like the whole. You just got to take the sickle out. He goes kind of blew up and decided to not it. To not end it like that. But now I am sitting here thinking, hey, I'm 21. Why still stay with this girl who is cool and could be the mother of my children? Blonde, nursing major, without dad, daddy issues. I mean, come on. I know a unicorn when I see one. No, you don't. You're 21. So am I just wondering if... So I am just wondering if you would stay with her after that. Thanks, man, for all... The content, you're the man. Go fuck yourself. Well, listen, I would appreciate capital letters and punctuations if you're going to write something that long. I mean, dude, I don't know how you feel about this chick. I mean, that sounds like pretty fucking crazy what happened in the bar. But I think a lot of guys, myself included, have been in that situation. You know, that guy who's pretending to be straight but isn't straight, and then he has a few, and then what he really is starts coming out, and then when you're kind of going like, hey, I don't, I don't go that way, then all of a sudden it becomes your problem, which is weird. So, um, no, you did the right thing. Get the fuck off me. I don't like being touched like that by another guy. Fuck off. Leave me alone. You're well within your right to do that. That doesn't make you homophobic or anything like that. That just makes you, you have nice, solid fucking boundaries. No one should be touching anybody if they don't want to be fucking touched, right? And then second of all, you got the fuck out of there, which is great because you got a temper like me. Fantastic. So you got the fuck out of there. And then in the end, you said, fuck this. I'm breaking up with you. Now, 
Did you break up with her because she wasn't supporting you or because you were so freaked out by what that guy did? That's what I would figure out. But, like, uh, I kind of like the whole clean slate. Fuck this shit. I'm out of here. Because um, I got to be honest with you. Like, that's not cool of her to not have you back in that situation. So I would say what I would do if I was you, I'd think about it. And after a few days, you know, if you're not just afraid to be single, if it's not those feelings, if you're truly missing her, then I'd sit down with her. I'd try to work it out. I'd talk to her and just tell her, like, why that bothered you. You know, um, all right, there's that. Okay, guys, you know how bad I read out loud. So please, if you could just help me out with capital letters, punctuation, you know, instead of just voice texting the whole fucking thing and then hitting send. All right. uh, My best friend came on to me while my girlfriend is in the hospital. My best friend came on to me while my girlfriend is in the hospital. All right, dear Billy Redbeard. Now, what I love about this is I don't know which way this is going to go, okay? Is this a lesbian and her girlfriend's in the hospital and then this is a female chick coming on to her? Is this a dude? Um, All right, me and my friend have been... Is this a guy with a girlfriend and then his best friend dude came on to him? Dude best friend? Male best friend? How the fuck do you say it? Lost in pronouns here. Okay, me and my friend have been friends for two years... She helped me get comfortable in the state I now live in after I moved from my hometown. And nothing like this has ever happened before. Most recently, she helped me get through my girlfriend of a little under a year being in the hospital for the past four months. Here's the problem. Last week, we were hanging out in her backyard. We were tossing back a few beers and generally just shooting the shit. We were six feet apart, so there's no need to report me to the CDC. We both drank a little too much that night, and at one point she was leaning over me trying to kiss me. I literally had to hold up my hand to stop our lips from making contact. Contact. I was pretty drunk and was so caught off guard that all I could think to say was, no, thank you. She went back to her seat, and we kept talking, but the energy had changed. The next morning she texted me saying, drank more than she should have. And she said she didn't remember much of our conversation, but I think she was lying. Yeah, she was embarrassed. She asked to hang out once since the incident, but I turned her down. Well, that's good. You got good boundaries. Now, here's my question. Is there any way I can stay friends with this girl without being a terrible boyfriend? I know I probably have to distance myself from her for a while. It's just that she means a lot to me as a friend. Is there some hope of salvaging the friendship or is it beyond repair? The lovely Nia has any advice maybe she could provide a woman's perspective. Thank you. Go fuck yourself. Um, Unfortunately, she's not here. Um, My gut is telling me that the reason why she was so friendly to you and has been helping you for so fucking long since you came there is because she's liked you the whole time. And Maybe she was hoping that you'd like her like that and you don't or whatever, but she still likes you that way and she got a little drunk and then tried to kiss you. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what her deal is, but I I can tell you this. Like, uh, as far as boyfriend, girlfriend, yeah, you can't hang out with her. Just what if your girlfriend had the same thing happen with a guy and he tried to kiss her, but she still wanted to hang out with him, be friends? You wouldn't, you wouldn't be comfortable with that and that would not be cool, right? So... It's the same thing with her. She would not be cool. You don't need to bring it up. I just would, you know, you know, some secret she just keep. Okay, you can handle this thing in house. You don't need to fucking cause all this goddamn. I'm in the fucking hospital, and you're trying to kiss my boyfriend. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, you don't need that shit. Just you know, I don't. I don't want to tell you. I never, I didn't have female friends when I was your age like that because that shit would happen. So <laughs> I don't know how to handle that one. A lot of stuff above my pay grade. All right. I apologize to everybody who actually pays attention to the news and is into finance that actually understands what shorting a stock is. I think I did an okay job trying to explain it. Well, you know, Bill, sometimes okay is, a, is, a not, is just not good enough. You know, it's just not good enough. Um, All right, anyways, that's the podcast for this week. The Bruins got the Capitals tonight. Who do the Celtics got next? 